Oh, that looks fun. What is that? You're not going to tell me what you're looking at? I can't imagine you guys would have the What the f*** are you doing? The guys did a great job getting the CUDA ready for Coscarelli and Baldwin's visit. As a result of that, I'd like to try to find something that I could reward them with to show my deep appreciation. Not something like a raise because they're not worth any more money. Mark's trying to surprise us with something. No matter what Mark says, it's nothing for us and all for him. No, no thanks. I've already, I've already done that. Do you know what hog fuel even is? Darren suffers from diarrhea of the mouth. That means that it just pours out of his mouth these aimless words, these babbling stories that mean nothing to anybody but him. Anyway, McCrampus, be careful with those boots. No, not that. And then the only time he actually does have anything cognizant to say at all, it's to criticize. Oh, well, that's way too expensive. Oh, way too much money. What is your budget? As cheap as I can amuse you idiots. He's trying to make up to us, suck up to us for what he's done to us in the past, but it's way too little, way too late. Where'd you guys buy your TV? You told me a year ago you got some big fancy schmancy TV that you don't deserve. Overstock.com. Overstock. Yeah. It's like your stomach has been overstocked. I'm gonna go back to work, okay? You can play on the computer, Nancy, okay? That's actually pretty cool. Josh! Come on, buddy. <laughs> this time on Graveyard Cars. We're disassembling Mike Hill's 1970 Plymouth Superbird. I did take the top one off first pool. We also have a deadline coming up on Chris Driscoll's AAR Cuda. Would also give me a chance to rectify the fixed Hot Wheels race from last time I was there. I'm gonna have to buy more parts for my car that were stolen by Mark. Well, you yeah. hit him in plain no, sight. It's like telling an orangutan to brush after every meal. As soon as you turn around, it'll hit you in the back with a dung patty. You better oh. go check your depends, fool. There's no, no time, no time. You Let the charger down, roll it, the roll it outside. Let the charger down, roll it outside. Coming to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead. Coming back to life. My name is Mark Warman. I work with my worst enemy, Darren Kirkpatrick. Give me a gun! And my son in law, Josh. Whoa! Along with my best friend, Royal. Well, all right. And our newest team member, Holly. This is exciting. We bring dead cars back to life if we don't kill each other. Oh, Mark. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Oh. While we're scrambling to finish the AAR CUDA, I have an appointment for the Superbird to go up to Portland to American Metal Cleaning and get dipped. We are jammed to the rafters with cars and work. We still have in the shop Mark and Elena's 1970 CUDA FE5 Rally Red 383 automatic car. We still have our 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 440 automatic FC7 Plum Crazy black top power sunroof, six-way houndstooth interior AM8 track rally dash car with a luggage rack, less than a handful of these cars built ever. We just got in a 1971 Dodge Challenger RT, 446 pack, 4 speed, 354 Dana, one of 127 made. We got a 1970 Plymouth Cuda, 340 automatic in tour red, factory rear window, louvers, hockey stick, and rear spoiler. This is our 1970 Barracuda that belongs to the Cooks. It's a factory convertible top 383 two barrel car. Hanging from the rafters, we got our 71 Cuda, 446 barrel, four speed, 354 Dana, tour red, shaker hood car, one of 108 made, still waiting to get back inside the shop. We just brought in a 71 Barracuda that we're doing a complete restoration in factory original Winchester gray. Fresh in from New York, we just got this 1970 Dodge Charger, factory 426 Hemi, four speed, 410 Dana Super Track Pack car in FK5 burn orange with black guts and a black top, one of 56 made, 1968 Dodge Charger RT, factory 440 automatic green with a white interior, white bumblebee stripe. This is a one owner car entrusted to graveyard cars. 1970 Dodge Challenger RT, 446 pack, four speed, 354 Dana, one of 847 made. 1972 Dodge Charger Special Edition, 400 four speed, 68 Dodge Charger factory, slant six, two owner car, East Coast, one of 903 ever built. An original 72 Dodge Charger 318 automatic A53 rally package. Over here we got our 69 and a half Super B we're just getting ready to start on. Bright green 446 pack, four speed, one of 826 ever made, waiting right now to go into the shop. 
Freshly painted is our 1971 Cuda 344 speed factory shaker hood car. Under the umbrella of you'll never see this twice in a lifetime, two VIN sequentially numbered 1970 Dodge Challenger RTs. These two cars started life in Hamtramck, Michigan in 1970, front to back, pilot co-pilot, and that's exactly how they're getting restored here at Graveyard Cars. One of our favorite cars that just showed up here, 1969 Dodge Charger. This is a Dukes of Hazard car. This car holds the record for the longest jump of any General Lee in any of the Duke television series and or movie. If you remember the freeway jump in the movie with Jessica Simpson, you'll remember this car. That's what we got going on at Graveyard Cars. You got any questions? Good. We have a lot going on at Graveyard Cars. We also have a deadline coming up on Chris Driscoll's AAR Cuda. First, I have to do the unique AAR blackout treatment. At the factory, these cars used a nitrocellulose lacquer applied to the top surfaces. That gave them that suede matte finish. Today, we don't have the suede toner for the lacquer, and even if we did, that lacquer won't hold up like today's urethanes do. So I made my own cocktail of black paint, flattening agent, reducer, and hardener so that when it dries, it has the same sheen, the same look, and the same effect as the original lacquer paint, but it'll hold up for 100 years versus a couple of years. A couple weeks ago, I called Alvaro at West Coast Metal Buildings up in Salem. I told him that we were out of room when we disassembled these cars. We needed a place for all the parts to go into. So while I was on the phone with Alvaro, he invited us up to take a look at the new uh, factory that they had just put together and maybe go over some ideas as to what would be the best solution to our problem. It's friggin' huge. You guys design it and hand build every, every hand weld everything? Yeah, hey. a, lot of, a lot of welding, a lot of cutting. Gosh. They gave us a tour of the facility, and I will tell you that it is the cleanest and the nicest facility, manufacturing facility that I have ever been in. It's got a great, great facility, 100 by 300 feet. That's what we need. I also know why Mark's so cheap. Why doesn't get us into a building like that? Good tools, good equipment, good people. You have a good product. Besides the fact that it's all American-made products, they're actually putting it all together here as well. They do their own bending, they do their own welding, their own brakes, their own shears. They have a mini assembly line out here that's second to none. Uh, I was really impressed watching the sheet metal come down the dolly setup where it would put the strength ribs in it. They're actually doing that here. They're not just ordering it in already bent. It actually comes in in a big sheet, a 3,000, 4,000 pound sheet and they run it through their own machine to make sure that every one of the strength ribs are exactly where it's supposed to be. I notice they do better metal work here than they do at Mark's shop. I haven't noticed a single wave. You know, Mark's panels on the car are really friendly. They'll sit there and they'll wave at you, you know? The way Mark's business is expanding, he's gonna need at least six storage containers. Uh, we're gonna get that to him and get his business rolling. It was nice having Mark and Darren come up today. I always enjoy their company, their fun, they're a bunch of goofballs, you know, but, it's a nice, beautiful day, and I think it's for, time for us to get a beer. I'm really grateful for companies like West Coast Metal Buildings. They are a good partner. I'm glad I made that decision because it's been the right decision. Uh, Alvaro and I got together and decided that we're going to go with an 8x16 storage unit, and he's going to build us half a dozen of them to see how they work out. They are to the prefabricated buildings that we are to the restoration of Chrysler muscle cars. The best there is. In 1970, Plymouth introduced a muscle car that had two different size tires when it left the assembly line. What car was it? A, the 1970 Plymouth Duster 340, B, the 1970 AA Arcuda, or C, the 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner Convertible? Stay tuned for the answer. So what Plymouth was it that left the assembly line with two different size tires in 1970? The answer is the AAR Cuda. With the unique low clearance megaphone dual exhaust, Chrysler felt it was important to put an E6015 on the front and a G6015 on the back, giving the car enough rake and clearance for the new exhaust. And by the way, it was the only Plymouth muscle car that ever left the assembly line with two different size tires on it. Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. We've got more cars in the queue than ever before, but with the help of West Coast Metals and Derek finishing the blackout on Chris Driscoll's AAR Cuda, we may actually stay on schedule. And as long as the guys keep doing good work, I've got a surprise in store they'll be talking about for years. Today we're disassembling Mike Hill's 1970 Plymouth Superbird. 
Uh, the guys won't be here for about an hour, so that'll give me a chance to raise it up in the air, do all of my documentation without being interrupted by them and their foolishness. Uh, there's two things I'm looking for underneath there. One is Lynch Road assembly line procedures and unique procedures for just the Plymouth Superbird. And up here at the front on the K-member, you see an X. And that, that X right there lets somebody know something on the assembly line. Whether it was that the steering gear was in place or whether the, everything had been torqued or checked, that X meant something. Here's where all the big stuff is. Big stuff. See the paint on the inside of that nose cone is running down. That means it was upside down when they painted it. And then here's the rivets. Those are great to know what the exact size of the rivet is. So once we get that nose cone piece off of there, we'll be able to uh, determine what the width and the diameter and the exact length of those are. And that would be the last two digits of the factory part number for the correct K-member for the 1970 Plymouth Superbird. What's happening, Chief? How you doing? You guys are on time. Right now, we're going to disconnect everything on the top of the engine that's needed so we can drop the engine transmission out one unit attached to the K-member, like the radiator hoses, wires, etc. If somebody can take the, we could take that radiator out of there right now if somebody can disconnect the lines on the bottom. You need a 5 8 and a half inch wrench. It's been pretty cool so far. It's been a handful putting up with Darren. We'll let Derek do that. He hasn't done anything. Get down there, Derek. We're, we're getting through it. We're going to live through it. It's all good. The reason that Derek came in today to give us a hand is Royals, one of the existential shows in town, showing off his 67 foot box. I asked him not to because uh, I told him we got a lot to do, but he wanted to go show off his car, which I painted. So if he gets a trophy in a way, it, it kind of comes to me anyway, but whatever. How you doing, D? I'm not bad. Darren just got me the wrong wrenches. Yep, that's how my boy works. Yeah. Give me the wrenches. I'm going to, buddy. You, have to, you haven't paid your dues. You just, don't waltz. you just waltz right here thinking you're something. You know, every time I need a tool around here, I can't find it. I have no idea where the tools are, if they've grown legs or what. Oh, they haven't grown legs. They're wherever you left them jackknifed in the back lot the last time you worked out there before you forgot where the hell you were at for a while. You know how you have those moments? That's where the tools are. They didn't grow any legs. Any legs? No. Whatever. <laughs> Just no. like damn Beautiful. Yeah. Nope. Darren, you got to take the top it. one off first. You know, it's hard working with Mark when he's always second guessing me and always hounding me about everything. I'd already done what he was hounding me about. I did take the top one off first, fool. Um, overall, uh, the new approach here with trying to get the guys uh, in tune and trying to train them instead of just bullying them around and, and making fun of them is working a little bit better, I think, so far. There it finally came off. Not a very How many feet? What do you mean? Sir? Nothing. Disregard. Darren was the having trouble. The shaft was spinning in the shock. That's what okay. the deal was, buddy. Uh, I am being reminded on a minute-by-minute -minute basis of, of, of why my blood pressure goes up. But overall, I think we're doing good. And then uh, we still need to get the drive shaft out. That's something. Okay. Totally uh, dumb. My, dumb. No, I didn't say any of those things. I'm trying to treat you oh, guys oh. with the respect that I would like to have. Hey, Jerry. Look. What are you doing? Darren. We're gonna take it out for our brakes. I'm using it for a pattern. Damn, heart attack here. Yeah, I'm using it for a pattern. pattern. You ate? I There's a piece of sharp metal hanging down. It was about ready to cut mark. I thought we'd just take it clear off the car to protect everyone. Perfect example of why it's so difficult to maintain a calm, peaceful outlook. Darren's trying to rip a piece of rusty metal off the lower nose cone that I need in place so that I can make a pattern for the lower half of the new nose cone when I put it back together again. Frustrating. All in all, it's been a good day here at Graveyard Cars. Derek and I got the drive line out of the Superbird, and Mark and Josh work on the front suspension. I think right now they're trying to get the torsion bars out. What's happening right now is that a lot of the nuts and the bolts are broken and, and rusted on this car, so we're heating up the nuts for the exhaust manifold so we can get them off of there. The heat will open them up so they'll actually come off the thread. Uh, right now we got everything unbolted on the bottom of the car and the top so that the motor and the transmission and the K-member can all come out now as one unit. Uh, in this particular case, because everything is old and it's rusty and it's crusty, I'm going to use the forklift to go up, preload the motor and the transmission, lower it down, hopefully it'll clear the car and we can move on to the rear suspension. We 
just finished pulling out the K-member, which has the motor bolted to it, as well as the transmission. Uh, one of the things I liked the most was that everything was there, every nut, every bolt, every clip, every fastener, linkage rods for the automatic transmission. It just makes my life so much easier when it comes time to put it back together again. Looks like I'm going to have to buy more parts for my car that were stolen by Mark. Well, you hit him in plain sight. He dropped his ass. Okay, stop. Oh. Stop. <laughs>
I'm all excited about that. It's been a long haul. I'm going to help Flipper go underneath this car and look for all the parts and the pieces that we need to get ordered. Hopefully there's a few of my pieces of my car left. All right, fool. So the way I see it, everything that you did before without my help has to be undone, which is typical. Okay. I really believe the car needs to be media blasted. If you look, did you notice the rust? It needs a complete restoration just like the Superbird does. Let's take the front suspension out of it, torsion bars, everything you powder coated for some strange reason, black. Let's undo all that and do all the correct colors and stuff on it. That Dana needs to come out of there. All those leaf strings need to be taken apart. Did you have those powder coated? I could live yeah. with that. That's all right, I can live with that. What started out to be a meeting about what parts you needed to restore my you know, 70 Dodge Challenger ended up being a meeting about an investigation as to where my parts had gone from the point we looked at it last. Okay, so I need to order your gas tank. I just think in, in fairness, uh, I know I took it without asking, but you were never happy with it because it got rust on it. And I put it in a car that somebody didn't care, so. So what are you saying? Well, I'm saying, do you want to contribute to the gas tank? Well, it was brand new. It was rusty. It was brand new. Okay. The distribution block for the emergency brake cable to go from here over to here, why didn't you put that on? Well, I did. This one I right didn't here. know it was missing. Thanks. I don't know how fair it is to automatically blame me for everything missing on his car. <clears throat> um, I, I thought we had kind of an open communication about, uh, you know, what I could use as long as I replaced it type of thing. You know, I was looking forward to it. I thought it was going to go real well. And it went pretty good at first, but the more and more we looked at the car, the more and more parts we found that were stolen. Where's all the nuts for the seats? Let me guess, I took those two. Surprise, there's still two of them on there, actually. Why would I take your nuts? Because you don't have any for yourself. Where's the bolts that hold the uh, the heat shields on? And don't say I took them. I don't know. Okay, that's the right answer. Oh, what's the deal with the gold rods on my transmission? What do you mean? Well, they're not right. They're supposed to be black, and those aren't the original rods. I thought you... Thought me what? I thought you knew that. No. I swear you told me that I could have those rods for the RTSC, didn't you? Well, you yeah. hit them in plain no, sight. No, I hit them in the cabinet near the shop originally. This meeting started off with good intentions, but now it looks like I'm going to have to buy more parts for my car that were stolen by Mark. So just make sure that when you take the car apart that you inventory every single well, oh, part for it. What about the front sway bar? It's missing. Huh? I, I think it's not right that you make me a scapegoat for everything missing on your car. Okay. Um, yeah, I took the sway bar. I took the sway bar. I thought he knew I took the sway bar. I took the shift rods. I, 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 uh... Front. Front sway bar. They had a front sway bar on these cars. That meeting went real well, didn't it? Gee, Christmas. So as always, I'm put back further and further on the back burner because now we got to get past the parts that are missing again, more parts that are missing, stolen, you know. Pilfered is a good word for it. In 1969, Chrysler was required to make 500 street versions of their Daytona Charger in order to compete at NASCAR. In 1970, when Plymouth introduced the Superbird, that number increased. How many Superbirds had to be made? A, 1,520, B, 1,720, or C, 1,920? Stay tuned for the answer. So just how many Plymouth Superbirds were made in 1970? The answer is 1,920. NASCAR had changed the rules by 70 and required a manufacturer to make one streetcar for every two dealerships in the U.S. And while that netted Chrysler a whole bunch of Plymouth Superbirds, the dealerships were having a hard time selling them. It was reported that the nose and the wing would be removed in some cases to make it more appealing to the average customer. Oddly enough, today, a Superbird with a Hemi and a four-speed original numbers matching could be worth over a million dollars. Who knew? Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more.
Darren took a nap while the rest of us finished tearing down Mike Hill's Superbird. Meanwhile, Larry the Upholster Guy installed the black vinyl top on Chris's AA Arcuda. I finally got together with Darren to plan the restoration of his 70 Challenger, and despite my good intentions, he accused me of stealing the parts off his car. Uh, now that we got the body and paint striping, headliner and vinyl top done on our AAR, we've got it raised up on the shop crane. We're getting ready to lower it down over the front and the rear suspension, which have already been detailed to OEM specs. And that'll be one of the last things we have to do on this car. Seems like just yesterday we were doing the Black Cuda, and now we're onto the AAR with the suspension. Um, this is the fun stuff for me. Um, we can actually get a lot done in a short amount of time. Today's going to be a fun day here at Graveyard Cars, except for working with Mark. We're going to put in the front suspension, the rear axle assembly for the 70 AA Arcuda. All the hard work is finally going to show off of the plating, the detailing, the painting, the assembly line markings, all that. Now is going to be a big payday here. We're going to put it all together. It's going to look great. All right. Very gingerly, <laughs> we are going to lower the car down over the rear suspension. Okay. You might have to move a few things, huh? Now, now, what did you hear? I'm just anxious as heck to Lower hear what you Lower the car down over the rear suspension. What did you hear? Same thing. No, Lower I want to Lower the car down it. over the rear suspension. Gingerly. Okay. Gingerly. Okay. Gingerly. Because a lot of Gingerly. times it gets translated Wait, into drop the car on the roof <laughs> yeah, yeah. and cave That's it in and let's start back over blah, blah, again. Blah, I just want to make sure. Before. It's like telling an orangutan to brush after every meal. It'll agree, it'll nod up and down, it'll smile, make some kind of cute noise, just like Josh does. But as soon as you turn around, it'll hit you in the back with a dung patty. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, stop, stop, oh. stop! It's Hard gotta go forward to the rear end or something. That's hey, what you're there for. Where'd you put that other it shackle might be on the other side. Oh, it's gotta I be centered, that. I would think, right? More or less. Well, my guys aren't that bright. <clears throat> The rear axle assembly sometimes can be a little difficult to put in these cars because you've got the springs attached to the housings and you got to like force things, move things around to get them to line up in the holes for the spring hangers and the shackles in the back. Josh, you're, you're pushing it the wrong way. Oh, I'm trying I want, to push I want the, the front you. to go towards Royal, just the front. Well, usually when I'm working by myself, I don't have any trouble at all. Okay, Darren, it's easy to say these things, but doing it. And you know, you know how Josh is. Hey guys, here's what happens. The leaf springs have a, a, the ability to move a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna loosen the purchase. There, thank you. Now a little bit more, Josh. When we put the axles in these cars, they've already been pre-assembled. In the case of the AAR, the leaf springs need to be loosened up where they mount onto the shackle so they can pivot a little bit and allow us that little bit of freedom and movement to get the front leaf spring perch in place and the back leaf spring perch. Darren, could you hold on a second, sir? and I'll get you this where it needs to be. As I've said before, I really like the Trans Am Challenger and the AA Arcuda. Uh, these cars were meant to go through a slalom course as fast as they could. These cars were built to handle and have horsepower. It came with a minimum 3.55 gear ratio on a sure grip carrier. It also had a rear sway bar in 1970 the only e-bodies that came with a rear sway bar were the Cuda and the Challenger, Trans Am, and AAO. Please tell me, please, in the name of all that is holy in this land, that Josh just got the K-member bolts cleaned and ready to go in. You know when you're driving down the road and you see some nut job talking to a mailbox and carrying on a conversation? It's the exact same thing that happens to me every single day. <laughs> okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, whoa. right. Whoa. 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 Yeah. The nut job has a better chance of getting a good reply, though. OK, let's get it in and get it up. OK, once I get it under there, we can roll it in there. OK. There we go. Not, Where's the bolts them? for the K-member? Do you not really have them? No, nobody told me to do any. Hang on, let, me, do let me start over. I'm sorry. I'm lashing out at you for the wrong reasons. Mark, buddy, yeah. okay, bolts for the K-member. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was never informed on getting those done and or clean. Realizing that. It's a good idea. If I work with them instead of beating them down, maybe if I work a little bit more with them and try to train them, that kind of thing. So I'm trying to be more patient and I'm trying to walk them through what I take as second nature. I'm trying to get them to take it as second nature. But unfortunately, it's a little hey, difficult with these particular guys. Well, that one's messed up. Throw that away just to get rid of it. The threads are messed up. Okay. Okay. Real tight. All right. In tight and in right. Oh. Lift it up. Grab the jack stand, fool. 
You Put the impact color, back. I will lower your face. Just get the jack stand. Got, got, got the jack stand. Jack. <laughs> so here's the thing. I go away for 90 seconds. I come back. The front wheels are on the car. Why is he putting the wheels on? I told him not to. He's going to do it his way. He's going to be like Royal. No, you've got to have the tool. If you I want told him. The wheels are going to slime up into the bottom <laughs> of the finger. No, 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 no. I no, told don't, him. No games. No, no time. Games. No time. No time. Let the charger down. Roll it, roll it outside. Let's charge it down. 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 Roll it outside. It's not easy working with Mark, but sometimes he gets a little worse and gets a little crazier. And that affects Josh, and that doesn't make things any easier to deal with around here. Let's charge it down. Roll it outside. Let's charge it down. Roll it outside. Charge it outside. Charge it roll it outside. Charge roll side. 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 Charge roll That's 15 minutes to get what you want. I'm going to drop his ass on this concrete. Well, why don't you bring it on, little tough guy? What are you going to do, slug? They're going to carry. Well, what about you, y'all? Left hand? Which one's. You know what? It's harder and harder for me to be nice if you're going to be a fool. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Shell off for everybody. Do it, shit up. Do what you want to do. Look at me, everybody. Hey. Oh. Come you on. Guys, we got cars to work. We got cars to work on, folks. <laughs> no. Look at look at this. Look at this. Can you do this? No, I can't. I also weigh more than ten can. pounds. We got cars to work hey, on. We got cars to work on. Can you do that? No, no I can't. can't. No, I can't. Can you put a car together blindfolded? I no, can do that. You never I will. I could lose weight and do that. <laughs> no, you would break the equipment. And they give me a hard time about not working. Oh, come on, give me a break. We're going to take the 72 yellow charger and move it outside. Then we're going to get the AAR coot up on the bin pack so we can get the torsion bars in. The turds got really lucky. The torsion bars went into place like they're supposed to, even with the wheels on doesn't happen all the time like that. The only reason they went in as easy as they did is I was there to big brother. In spite of a few bumps in the highway, everybody pulled together and we actually did well. We got front and rear suspension under the car. We're nearly done. I'm really looking forward to when Chris comes down and checks it out. I think he's gonna love it every bit as much as I do, if not more. You better go check your depends, fool. You probably took advantage of the fact that I didn't have a lot of experience. Congratulations okay. on the extra chin, by the way. Get up a little earlier than that to beat the kid. We're finished installing the front and rear suspension on Chris's AA Arcuda, and now it's only a matter of hours before our deadline and my rematch on the Hot Wheels racetrack. The fools had better stay on task because I've waited a long time for another shot at the title. Hey, you want to get me some more gloss black paint, though? Yeah, I think Please? there's another can under the hood of the car I left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little slow. You better go check your Depends, fool. Uh, why don't you help me set the back window in this thing? So what I like to do is I like to get the ribbon nice and warm so it lays out good. Normally, I have a glass company come out and install the windshield and the back glass in these cars. In the case of the AA Arcuda, it has a original set of rear window louvers on it. These are very, very rare, so I want to be responsible for those. Things are going really great on the final assembly of the AA Arcuda. We've got the rubber rear bumper installed, the tail lights, we have the deck lid latch, we have mirrors installed, heater suitcase and steering. But everything came to a screeching halt when it came time to put the power brake booster in. You're saying that the bracket that goes yeah, against the firewall. The, bracket, the, ri the ribs uh -huh. are facing out right now, and I believe they're supposed to be facing in. You know what I mean? Oh, did I turn it around? Yeah, I think you did. No, that's right. That's right? Uh-huh. OK. I didn't believe Mark, so I decided to go to the boneyard and check a couple of uh, original power brake cars myself. That's right, mine's wrong. Yeah. OK. That's what I just around. you were blocking half those holes. I want to make sure you knew that. Good job, Royal. Good job, Royal. <laughs> I'm going to make you look really good because two reasons. One, I'm extremely old. Two, I have a very tiny, tiny penis. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, you know.
My name is Tristan. I own Trifer Auto Glass and Tint in Eugene, Oregon. We do automotive glass, auto window tinting, auto accessories. Mark called us up, he wants a windshield installed in his AAR Cuda, so we're gonna get that installed right away. One of our newest vendors in the last couple of years has been Trifer Auto Glass. I really enjoy their work. They take a lot of pride in what they're doing. We haven't had any comebacks from it. Uh, they drop what they're doing, they come over, they get it done, and they head out. And it's just a good subcontractor, and that's what we're surrounding ourselves with. We got Chris's AAR CUDA done on time, and I decided it would be really cool if I just loaded it up on our rollback, headed up to Oregon City, and delivered it to him in person. Uh, would also give me a chance to rectify the fixed Hot Wheels race from last time I was there. Uh, normally speaking, when we're done with a car, we hand it back to them. It's got keys and ignition. You hit the starter and you drive it down the road. Beautiful. Hi, Mark. Hey, buddy. How are you? Great. It's very nice. In Chris's case, because we formed a friendship, he asked me if he could put the motor in it and some of the different ornamentation. I had no problem with that. He's a restoration enthusiast. I've seen his other cars. I trust him to finish it right. Time and time again, the Jerdan has come through. Absolutely one of the best investments I ever made. Never had any problems with it. It's there every time I hit the key, and it makes what I need to do possible. So Mark was good enough to bring it back. I was blown away. It's absolutely stunning. Mark picked up the car last season, and it was in very poor condition. Um, it was all there, but just very, very rough, and I knew I couldn't do it on my own. I needed a some professional help with it. Yeah, I knew it was a, a good car, you know, underneath. So this is a second life for it. This is just, right now. I couldn't be happier. Uh, some of the features I like about the car are the vinyl top. I like the rear window louver option. I think those turned out really nice. Um, the rear spoilers are cool on these cars. Uh, to me, it kind of looks like a, a jet fighter with that hood and that rear spoiler. And I'm eager to put the, uh, the side exhaust on. They had the AARs and Trans Am Challengers had side exhaust that exited in front of the rear wheels with a big chrome tip. And that was kind of a nice feature that only came on those cars. The fact is, I formed a friendship with Chris, and that's awesome. But uh, one of my biggest agendas is to take another shot at the title on a Hot Wheels track. So you remember the deal, though. I did my part. I got the car done, right? So you owe me a rematch at the Hot Wheels. You want a rematch? I want a rematch. And I don't want that uh, bum car that you gave me last time, the one with the bad wheel and, and how you set the brakes up on it so they drag so you have a little van. I want to fair, because I, I think with my lightning cat reflexes. Have you been practicing? Sir? <laughs> so you got two Challengers, two 71s. Uh, two like. identical 71 Challenger. Hemi cars. Well, they're both shakers now. You sure mine's a Hemi? Well, it might be. It might not be. So yeah, it might, might will... be a 340, and you got the Hemi. I see. Okay, we'll that's never fine. Know. That's fine. But you can choose. Okay. Yeah, choose which one you like. Okay, I'm going to choose this one because you set this one closer to me to dupe me. Oh, clever. All right. A coin toss to see who gets lane choice. Heads. It, it is heads. Of course it is. This is my day, I told you. Red lighted. All right, Mark's up one. Okay, all right, that's what I'm talking about. Up there. That's one. Oh! Hello, ladies. <laughs> what, uh, what happened there? You, you called me on the 340 Challenger. I did, yeah. you thought you had me, didn't you? I did. Gotta get up a little earlier than that to beat the kid. Did I red light? That was a green light. Huh. Wow, Mark, I'm impressed. Huh. Today is your day. Beat Chris at his own track, but last time that I was up here, um, you know, he, he probably took advantage of the fact that I didn't have a lot of experience at it, and, and I kind of got beat. Uh, but this time, I, I pummeled him pretty bad. Like, the doors don't come off the cars, but the one was kind of almost blown open from the last couple races, so. I cannot beat you today. Huh. Huh. Well, well done. 
Thank you, my friend. You know, as I get ready to head out of here, I realize that we've uh, not only brought another Chrysler back from the dead and given a new shot at life, but we forged a good friendship with uh, Chris and Sue. So, uh, you know, this is, uh, I'm doing what I love and uh, I'm passionate about it and I think that's coming through every single time. Hey, listen up, fools, we got a lot of work to do. Next week, we need to be able to get the tail lights, the SE finish panel, rear bumper, side markers, fuel cap, fuel filler, and fuel tank in. Right now, everything is going great at Graveyard Cars. We are on a roll. We delivered our AAR on time. The cars that are out in the shop are way ahead of schedule for body and paint, which is a good thing, and I have no intention of letting up on the turd stain. It's time to turn and burn. Can you slow down a little bit? It's going right over my head. Well, if you had a little hair up there to catch it on the way by, it might slow it down. Exterior ornamentation includes the Challenger emblems that go on the fender along with the RT, the belt moldings. Under the hood, I want to put as much stuff as we can together before we put the hood on it. I want to put headlight doors and grill in it. In here. Then I want to roll it into the shop. Then I want to let it down over the suspension. That limits the number of times that we're going in and out of the shop. That limits the number of times chips can destroy He's something. He finally decided, listen to me, about putting it all together here first. So the cars may change, but Mark's insults, they're always going to stay the same. Come on, guys, let's rock and roll. <laughs> let's rock and roll, pull it, and do it. Chrome Dome, your head is shiny as a cue ball. I love it. You got more than We need to use whatever wax he's using to use it on the car. Congratulations like on the extra chin, by the way. Nice. <laughs> I'm really excited to give the guys their gift. They're going to love it. It's going to be the kind of thing that they talk about for a long time. And it's going to show my true appreciation for the fact that they have been doing a good job. Ha, see ya. One of the other reasons I got the reflective glass on my office, I can hear you Is that for the lobby? behind me. Is that for the lobby? It doesn't matter. It doesn't have nothing to do with you. It's nothing to do with the six foot tall toilet bug. Is it for your birthday? I know your birthday's coming up. I quit having birthdays after last year. You guys ruined my birthdays too, just like you ruined Christmas. Now, this is a little bit of a something something, so what do you need? I totally forgot why I even came up here, to be honest with you. It's not unnatural for me to give a gift. Uh, I give the gift of laughter every single day. Um, but spending money, it's a little tougher because we're on a tight budget. And, and because of that, I'm really glad I hooked up with Overstop because I managed to make my buck go a long, long way, further than I thought it would. I wish I had a big toilet handle right here. I could. What would that accomplish? It would flush the turd, go back to work. Wow. Things are going absolutely great at Graveyard Cars right now. We're definitely on a roll. I think even Sir Hates a lot would tell you that we're on a roll. On a roll. I could have done your own words. We got the Superbird completely disassembled and taken up to American Metal Cleaning, so I'm looking forward to getting that back, seeing what kind of panels we have to replace. Well, Hopefully there's something left. There'll be a lot left. Chris Driscoll got his AA Arcuda delivered back to him. And I blew Chris Driscoll's doors off on the racetrack. He wasn't very happy about that. At least you say you did. There's no proof, is there? Well, there's proof on the film. Why don't you go I back and watch it? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. But I just was going to say on the Hot Wheels thing, I blew his doors completely off like three times. I mean, that's his track. You know what children do is play with little Hot Wheels? West Coast track? Metal Buildings came up. We now have six brand new 8x16 storage containers to put the parts that come off the cars in. That's going to help us get organized. Too bad they wouldn't have been here a few years back. Had a little bit bigger unit. I could put my whole car in there and saved it. Yeah, well, I would have had the lock to it anyway. Very nice. Um, we got a chance to inventory your car and go over uh, what we need to do to get, get get back on track, having it restored. So, Mike, there's a few more missing pieces, though. I don't know, Ben. Each time we look at it, there's more and more pieces that are gone. Look at me. Your left eye is getting swollen shut even more. Why? More than it was like six months ago. Six more months, you're going to look like Mr. Peanut. Why? What's he look like? <laughs>